astronauts go. It's in a moment, but uh, before too long, we ought to be able to see the astronauts perhaps coming back into the picture here. They've already been told that uh, it's going to be tight on the close-out, so uh, times are, are moving along here. And they're tired. <clears throat> By best guess, Frank, they're six or 700 feet still east of the uh, Antares lunar module. The bright lights we're seeing are the refracted uh, image of the sun bouncing around the lens of the live Westinghouse colored heat TV camera which is showing us this picture. The camera is pointed toward Cone Crater, which is at the uh, upper right uh, hand corner of the picture. We should see Shepard and Mitchell begin to reappear in the picture in from one to three or four minutes. It's impossible to guess exactly when. Uh, at the right hand side of the picture, we'll see them. Sounds to me like uh, several of the pieces of equipment in the Met keep popping out of it. It does indeed, Pete. It also sounds to me, judging by some of the colorful language we've gone to hear, that Al and Ed are getting very tired Shepherd and very pressed. Back now to the vicinity of the uh, and who wouldn't be? Antares. Pete, that Met uh, is invaluable, though, isn't it? Uh, Oh, they, they wouldn't have been able to bring back all the stuff they've got. To, uh, it, it, it certainly is, but I kind of have the idea that if they're really moving in a hurry, that the Met is uh, airborne part of the time, and so is a lot, <laughs> of the, a lot of the equipment that's on top of it. Of course, most of it uh, you can strap down, but uh, I think they probably have these core tubes in some of those big bags, and they probably have a tendency to hop out and, and fall on the uh, lunar surface. That's right. It's like a loose trailer attachment on a car bouncing on a rough road. It weighs so little. Right. Pete, speaking of bags, uh, I know that you and Al came back and suggested they put a water bag in the suit. I imagine that's been uh, very, very helpful on this mission. Uh, five hours without a drink of water would seem to be almost an impossibility when you're working the way they are. Well, really, the only uh, discomfiture we had was we did tend to get a little bit thirsty. Also, you realize the uh, air in the suit is quite dry. Okay, we're approaching the lab now. We should begin to see them. I mean, they're approaching the lamp. Roger, Al, and I guess from here we'll be uh, big and split up, and uh, Ed can take the mat and uh, proceed to the uh, uh, cluster of boulders he had reported earlier to the north of the lamp, and uh, you can proceed out to the uh, Alpha. Have they indicated at all how dirty they've gotten? No sign so far, Pete. Uh, or whether they got as dirty as they did yesterday on the first moonwalk. I was going to say, yesterday they indicated that they were, uh, and you could see that they were right. quite, picked up an awful lot of dust, Pete. And the reason we're not seeing them now is that uh, the camera is fixed north of the Met, pointing west, pointing east. Is to uh, check the alignment and uh, verify the alignment and uh, leveling. Okay, I'm just going to go through the same procedure. Okay, and I got I got a uh, uh, on you on the airplane. Uh, All right, let me give you a call when I get there and when I'm aligned and level. Shepard on his way out to the ALSEP to align, level, and re retune, if you will, the antenna that carries the radio signals from the scientific experiments from the moon back to the Earth. 
You know, Jules, everybody has something that, uh, that you do that, that's very difficult for the individual. And I had the job of aligning the antenna on our LSAP. I'm out in the area of the boulder field. I'm going to photograph many of the boulders, uh, the rocks, the broken ones, the big ones, what have you, and then grab as many of the different fragments as I can around these piles of broken boulders. Uh, I, now that I'm here, I see a large number of inclusions. I can't tell whether they're crystal or not. Uh, I think that they are. And uh, I'll grab as many of these and give you before and after shots as I can. Uh, a whole way back full of rocks. Okay, that, that sounds great. And that's, a, that's, of course, Mitchell Pete gathering more rock samples and soil samples, even as Al Shepard goes out to reset the uh, ALSA okay, antenna. The, uh... All right, with Mitchell oh, taking okay. photographs of the rocks and Al Shepard on his way out to the ALSA package, we'll pause for a moment. We'll have more on Apollo 14 after this word from Tang. I have color television picture from the moon, from the surface. Uh, it uh, is empty at this point. Uh, we expect before too long to see uh, Ed Mitchell moving into uh, view. Al Shepard is still out at the uh, ALSEP uh, package, retuning it. And he has been told that he has about uh, two or three minutes uh, remaining to stay there before heading on back to uh, the vicinity of the LEM. They've been out nearly four hours now, Frank, yes. and uh, they want the e mission control wants this EVA ended by four and a half hours, which means by the time they make it back to the LEM in 10 or 15 minutes, clean off the accumulated dust and dirt, uh, re-ingress, uh, that's a half hour chore right sure. there. Capcom Fred Hayes asking him to turn the TV now pointed toward the east, toward Cone Crater, uh, to the south, so, so we'll see, you'll see the line on the Mesa as they load it up. And we'll see the camera move in a minute as Shepard returns it. I can see the next requirement will be for a portable television camera so that we can accompany them on all their traverses in the future. Wouldn't that be great? That would be yeah, wonderful. I told you that years ago, Frank. Sure. Uh, Jules, I believe the rover has a portable TV camera. Yes, it does. The one drawback, uh, there's the camera moving now, Pete. in the same place. Uh, uh, on the left, isn't it? Russians didn't steal it. <laughs> They've activated Lunacard. Yes, and as a matter of fact, this morning the designer of Lunacard took a blast at Apollo 14. Al Shepard positioning the camera. Okay, if you tilt it just up slightly, Al, that'll be it. Lunacard is a long way off. Lunacard's some 800 miles away, of course, but it's anonymous designer. Soviet designers are always anonymous. Says that almost all the work Shepard and Mitchell have done on this far could have been done much more cheaply by automatic equipment such as Lunacard, unmanned equipment. I know Pete Conrad agrees with that. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> Could you say that sounds sus suspiciously like sour grapes? Very much so. Yeah, they're, so they're so crude about it, you know. Their, their timing is so awful. Well, I'm sure there are a great many people in the Soviet Union uh, in the scientific circles that recognize uh, and, and congratulate this achievement. We need to proceed now with the regular program. There we see it. Yes. Okay, would you like a silver wind shot? Stand uh, by.
and as Pete was saying, the lunar rover to be used on the next Apollo flight, Apollo 15, in late July, does have a camera to... Uh, uh, Shepard uh, moving across uh, our picture to... Uh, show us live pictures. ...photograph the uh, solar wind composition experiment. Jules, I was saying <clears throat> earlier, the most difficult task I had to do with the ALSAP was to align the antenna. For some reason, that mechanism and I were not compatible. And I even had to get a, 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 a copy of it, and I had it on my desk for four months before the flight, and when I was sitting there thinking, I'd practice aligning the bubble. And uh, when we aligned, I, I worried about that so much, I stayed up at night worrying about getting that aligned. Go ahead and use your standard down some picture of that direction you're shooting it in. They don't have an input here. And these are still pictures being shot of the solar wind experiment, a long aluminum foil-like device uh, designed to record the impact of solar particles. Mitchell in the foreground of our picture, Shepard further in the background on the other side of the lens. They, they look very dirty to me. The lunar overshoes are suspiciously gray to a high height, Pete. Yeah. And down here, sir. Okay, I'd like for you to return uh, your camera, so uh, you don't have to bother removing the magazine from it. Uh, you can just put the whole camera in the ETB. this golf shot <laughs> they got more dirt 